they're so oppressed they can even make their own little adverts telling us how oppressed they are. Renounce the monster male, i.e. the straight white male, and his mission of violent oppression, yet he's letting them do this. A few days ago on the 27th of July, there was a remembrance for the 50th anniversary of the legalisation of homosexuality in the UK when the government passed the Sexual Offences Act, which basically allowed them to have sexual relationships without automatically being criminalised. It was really more of a half decriminalisation of it, but that's besides the point. Point is, it was a landmark milestone in the history of humanity, especially in the UK, and it's something that should be celebrated. However, to one apparent artist, who to me seems to be nothing more than a glorified projectionist, we have this to remember it by. And this is his little art project. This man is called Martin Farrell. And this is what he does. He makes progressive social justice type artwork, but projects slogans and strange things onto public landmarks. And now it seems that he can get advert space for his artistic endeavors. The irony is not lost on me. Now this is what the billboards are meant to represent. The six billboards in the series referred to demands that made by 96s activists that still warrant action today. All six billboards are black and white, just as newspapers and television were black and white in 1967. Well, they already had colour TV back then anyway, but whatever. Headlines are set in Universe Extra, Black Extended first release in 1957, and popular with designers throughout the 1960s. Yes, we get it. It's a very 60s aesthetic. But the thing is, these may have been slogans around that time, especially during feminism, the second wave to be precise, but I doubt the moderates, I doubt the majority of gay and lesbians and bisexual people were actually trying to use these slogans to affect change. I don't think they were using those slogans. I think that was probably the second wave rad femmes, but I could be wrong. And this is the first bit that you see. I didn't see it in order. So, sadly, we're going to be doing this ass backwards. This is what he says about this particular slogan. Sexual revolutionaries demand freedom from sexist gender roles. Which is weird, because the whole point of that law, the whole point of that activism was not gender roles. It was all about trying to be allowed to be who you are. The fact that homosexuality was cr criminalised was the reason why they wanted to decriminalise it. They wanted to make it... Well, legal. They wanted to be able to be open and free with who they were. It wasn't really about gender roles. And if it was about gender roles, how come they're talking about women? But anyway, let's continue. In 1967, the National Health Service made the contraceptive pill available to all women. The pill had been available since 1961, but only to married women. Women were now free from the fear of pregnancy. But see, what has this got to do with the sexual act? What has this got to do with anything about the legalisation of homosexuality in 1967. Nothing, people. Nothing at all. He's letting them do this. This is they live. Homosexuals and women are systematically oppressed by male supremacist society as if gay men are not men. But the thing is, guys, do, you, do they mean gay men or do they mean lesbians or trans? And this is the second one. Homosexuals and women are systematically oppressed by male supremacist society. Which is weird, because if, if a male supremacist society exists, why would gay men be oppressed. They're still men, even if they're gay. And what exactly do they do that harms the patriarchy? I don't know. Gay activists found they had a great deal in common with women and the feminist movement. Both groups agreed that genuine liberation could only be achieved by eliminating the social pressures on men and women to conform to narrowly defined gender roles. Well, yeah, but the problem is they didn't liberate straight men from their narrowly defined gender roles. In fact, we still have to be the providers. We still have to do all these things that we shouldn't be able to have no choice in. We should be able to have the freedom to do what we want to do. But no, we haven't. And it turns out that the gay activists only ended up allying themselves with what I like to call, metaphorically speaking, the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire would ally themselves with Gauls and Greeks and other peoples that they would later on conquer because it's divide and conquer. They can get them to fight themselves. They've weakened those tribes and those countries and then they can take them over. And this is what's happened to the, the gays the men, not the lesbians, right now. If you ever watch anything from Prince of Queens content, you can see that the feminists have turned on gay men. This was a terrible decision by the gay activists to ally themselves with 
the feminist movement. Notice how he says women, when really there's nothing in common with women and gay men, really. Everybody are individuals. The idea that as groups they have something in common is absurd to me. Society is still dominated at every level by men and the gender role system. Well, that's funny. They want to end the gender roles, but yet men still have their own. And let's not forget that men are not the majority of teachers, nurses. Men still dominate. 1960s gay women's rights campaigners observed that British society was dominated at every level by men, and those men naturally had an interest in holding on to power. I like how they have to assume that these men want to hold on to power, if they have any power whatsoever. The whole point in this is that all men have power and want to keep it, yet not all men have power. 50 years later, it's still the same, apparently, despite the fact that women have an education system that is predominantly in favour of them, it's catered to them, they are the most of universal university graduates, they have all the rights when it comes to alimony, divorce, and what else? Oh yes, they have the rights to the children, men do not. They have full rights over their bodies, men do not, and men do not yet have their own pill. In fact, feminists are against that because it levels the sexual playing field. And apparently, apparently men dominate all of society when, as I say in the video, before, they don't. I mean, look, you see, embrace lesbianism and overthrow the social order. So men, gay men, get fucked. Remember 1967, guys. 1967 was the legalisation of homosexuality in the UK. Why does he want us to remember the radicals? As if it was some radical movement that forced their way into legalisation when it wasn't. Embrace lesbianism. The 1967 Sexual Offences Act did not apply to lesbians. This moment in gay history was not a key moment for gay women. They found themselves undermined, but not outlawed by the state. Lesbian sex was never taken seriously enough. Some even doubted the possibility of it. They still do. Uh, for society to make laws against it. So, there was no law against lesbianism. In fact, there was no need to legalise it because it wasn't even illegal. So, does this not say that perhaps the act to legalise gay men was actually more to do with misandry or something? I don't know, but misandry doesn't exist to, uh, to women who are feminists, we know this. The invisibility of lesbianism was ended by the rise of lesbian feminism. You see, the thing is, you're seeing that they were invisible. He seems to forget that this was the 1960s. Even my dad being born out of wedlock was a taboo subject to be had. So lesbianism is no different in that regard. There were things that people just didn't talk about. It wasn't that they were invisible and people didn't want to know anything about him. It was taboos, it was, you don't talk about things, you don't discuss these things. They weren't really invisible, everybody knew they were there, they just didn't talk about them, because people couldn't open up about these things. And again, look, they're going on and on about feminism, this had nothing to do with feminism. At least, the moderates didn't really have anything to do with it. This is how they want us to remember it, overturn the ideology of better old male supremacy, basically rat fem bullshit. How dare they fucking use that monumental moment in British history to fucking slander men and fucking tell everyone to overthrow us. Like, look at the, let me show you something, guys. Look, cranes in the distance. And more cranes. My place of work is down there. There's a Tesco's down there, which is a fucking thing. Uh, fucking supermarket chain. There's builders in that crane, there's builders in that crane, there's people driving the trains who are all men. There's people working in the fucking hotel over there, the Premier Inn. Let me zoom in. And then, down here is Manchester's main prison. Down this road. Strange ways. If we're lucky we can even find the spire at that peeps out over the trees. I don't know if we can see it from here. But uh, this is apparently the fucking male, op male oppressive society. The men that are fucking oppressing all these women. Those builders, those train drivers, those inmates and fucking prison guards and God knows what else. They're oppressing the women and the homosexuals. By homosexuals, they mean bloody lesbians. And they say that they're being oppressed, yet they have this advert that's fucking telling me this. Why, is, if the patriarchy is oppressing them, if they want to do all these things to them, why are they letting them ad advertise their ideology? Is it not in the patriarchy's best interest to not do these things? My friends, we have reached peak irony and peak retardation. Remember 1967. Remember 1967. A monumental moment in the history of our country where we legalised homosexuality, vindicating people like Alan Turing and 
Oscar Wilde. Now those are the great fucking human beings. And what do they do to tell us to remember this? Become rad fans. Overturn the ideology of hetero male supremacy. The Gay Liberation Front was a revolutionary gay pressure group formed in London. The group argued that the oppression of both women and homosexuals are byproducts of traditional gender roles because masculinity itself was historically associated with domination, oppression, and violence. Misandry people, need I say any more? And look, I could go on and hear this thing about masculine superiority and all that bullshit and privilege, but again, it's just misandry, that's all you can boil it down to. Renounce the monster male and his mission of violent oppression. Lesbian activists of the 1960s, or rather radical feminist lesbians, characterised aggressive dominant male behaviour as subhuman or monstrous. Again, misandry. They were misandrists. They fought prejudice with prejudice. But again, he's trying to make it out that all these rad femmes, all these radical gender extremists, or sexuality extremists, if we want to term something, were the main force behind the legalisation of homosexuality, or at least gays and bisexual men, when really, they weren't. They were the loud mouths who basically made everything difficult for the moderates, but the moderates still got it done. It's like a Martin Luther King. He and the moderates were the ones that got things done, who got the Civil Rights Act passed. Not Malcolm X. Malcolm X did not achieve anything he set out to achieve. In fact, he became more liberal. He became more liberal because his ways weren't working, and the fact he also began to see things differently, and also he had a falling out with the Nation of Islam, but whatever. And look, lampooning patriarchal power, they aimed to lessen its impact and embolden people from all walks of life to renounce gender-based oppression. And yet, again, as I said before, straight men are still in the same position they were 50 years ago. So yeah, in fact it's worse. <laughs> Fight prejudice with prejudice people, that's what they want us to do. And that's the end of the video. Look at this. I, th I think this is absolutely abhorrent that they would do such a thing, that they would use this monumental moment in history to basically push their social justice extremist positions. But why am I not surprised? They take credit for everything. They take credit for all these things. We know they didn't do anything. They did nothing. He's it's almost as if this Pharrell guy is just trying to essentially take credit for the liberation of gays to feminism. That's what he wants. He wants feminism to take the credit when they didn't. It took men like Oscar Wilde, men like Alan Turing, and countless other people who I can't even name because I don't know their names to essentially legalise this to get them on the road to equal rights that they now have. It's just insane. Insane. And yet they say they're oppressed. If the patriarchy was truly real, this would not be possible. And in fact, I do believe that's near where I live. That looks like Manchester. It looks like Salford. So, yeah. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. <laughs>